What's up guys, this is Kyle over here at The Horror File, coming back again with another review. Uh, today I'm actually reviewing another Artsploitation uh, films uh, movie. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with Artsploitation at this point, uh, basically Artsploitation is a company uh, that, uh, that does a really good job of finding really good foreign films. They actually have some in the United States, but mainly their films are independent movies they find. A lot of them are foreign. Uh, very, very good company uh, for finding very you know, underground foreign independent movies. They're, you know, most of their titles are very great that I've reviewed. Um, but today they sent me over a copy of this movie to, to check out and to review. Uh, this movie is called Children of the Night. This movie is a 2014 vampire horror movie, a horror movie with some comedic elements. It does have a lot of comedic elements in this movie, but vampire horror uh, is directed by Ivan Knoll. Uh, this movie is from Argentina. Uh, it's got Spanish, uh, uh, you know, it has American subtitles, but the whole movie is in Spanish. Uh, I'm not really familiar with Ivan Knoll too much. Uh, I don't know if he's a newer director, um, but uh, getting a little bit about this movie. Uh, this movie um, has is about a journalist. Uh, at the beginning of the movie, the movie opens up. Uh, you see this journalist sitting in front of a computer. She gets a strange email uh, that basically is a woman that's inviting her to um, to come over to this orphanage um, to fly over to this orphanage to kind of get us, you know, to, to get you know news out about this orphanage. Um, and maybe to write a story about the orphanage to get it some exposure. Um, and they, she said that these kids that live in this orphanage have this, this rare skin disease. Um, so the journalist obliges, uh, you know, and does go over. Before she goes over, when it is showing the scene of her in her office, before she actually flies over, uh, this guy comes up to her who works with her. Uh, you know, try to be lovey-dovey, I guess you want to call it. Tries to kiss on her and stuff. She's not really having it. You know, she's... Um, I guess they're, they're supposed to be boyfriend and girlfriend, but she doesn't want to you know, show any kind of public display of affection with him. She's like, no, not at work. Let's, we're not going to do this. You know, I don't want to bring this into the workplace. The guy wants to go with her over to this orphanage, but she tells him no, that she wants to go alone. So she goes, goes over to this orphanage. She flies over. The first scene that you actually see of her, uh, see of her going to the orphanage, she's walking down the street with her luggage. Uh, she has a rolly, like, luggage bag. And there's this guy standing in front of this fire. It's like, you know, right at night. Standing in front of this fire, he has a trench coat on. She walks up to him. He's very quiet. He's not trying. He's not. You know, he knows she's there, but he's not trying to answer any of her questions. She's looking for directions. He's just kind of not paying her attention. Doesn't really care about it. Or and uh, you know, she goes down to this orphanage. Well, she ends up at this orphanage. Uh, she meets the director, the woman that sent her the email. This nurse. She's an ex nurse uh, who takes care of these kids at this orphanage. Um, and she has a. You know, all these kids, like she said, has a rare skin disease, which is kind of. Odd. She brings you know the journalist in, shows her the kids while they're sleeping and stuff. Look like normal kids, really nothing out of the norm. Um, so you know, as time goes by, this uh, this movie is sort of a slow burner. You you kind of learn uh, a lot about the journalist and about this ex nurse at the beginning of the movie, uh, and then midway through the movie, uh, which this isn't spoiling anything because obviously you know these kids are going to be vampires. It's a vampire movie. Uh, the journalist learns these kids are vampires, uh, ranging anywhere from four to 120 years old. Um, some of the older ones, from what I saw, are actually the younger looking ones. So, basically, what happens is these vampires that bite these kids, the kids stay at the, the year that they actually get bitten, they stay that age forever. Um, so, you know, the, you kind of learn there's like a side story to this movie. Uh, one of the kids has a connection with the journalist that, that she doesn't know until later on in the movie. Uh, and you do learn about this. It's, it's actually a really interesting side story I found. Um, actually, that was one of the, uh, the big things I liked about this movie was that little side story with the, with the vampire kid and, and the journalist. I thought that was really neat. Um, but, uh, so yeah, the, this, this nurse, this ex-nurse is like you know, oddly leading these kids uh, taking care of them. So you learn they don't really have a skin disease. They're vampires. They show the journalists their teeth. Their teeth grow, you know, as uh, it takes a while to grow, but there's a lot of them have, you know, vampire teeth. Um, and uh, she's trying to lead these kids into, she wants to take care of these kids and, and consider this like a sanctuary for them. Um, there is actually a lot of uh, these sanctuaries that are around, you know, where they live in Argentina and all this. Uh, there's a lot of sanctuaries around that are you know have similar kids in similar cases, um, but this is the, apparently the nicest one out of all of them. There's probably I would guess probably 40 or 50 kids at this one. There's a lot of them there, um, and kind of throughout the movie, the beginning part of the movie, you see you know kids start getting uh, captured and taken away by the local. Uh, there's like a, a nearby uh, village 
uh, who start taking some of these kids captive and actually killing them with spikes, you know, through the heart. Obviously, generic vampire, spike through the heart. Um, and this nearby village just does not approve of these kids. She, they don't approve of the whole situation that's there. Uh, and uh, and they just pretty much want to destroy the entire sanctuary. They just they're tired of it. They don't you know obviously these kids are going out uh, and are they are able to uh, drink blood. That's their you know, vampire thing. They drink blood. A lot of the younger kids, uh, the the nurse said, are only allowed to drink animal blood, and, and a lot of the older kids actually drink human blood. They go to like nearby villages and you know the nearby towns, and while people are sleeping, drink their blood. They don't. They don't kill everybody. Uh, they're not like horrible, horrible vampires. Uh, but, I mean, who the hell wants to get their blood drank while they're sleeping? That's kind of... I don't know. That's weird. Um, but as you go along, you learn that the head kid... This is the head vampire kid right here on the cover. Uh, he's actually Count Dracula's 90-year-old grandson. Which was a really cool, interesting thing as well. It doesn't really spoil anything to do with the movie. A lot of stuff happens in this movie. Um, this movie is a really, really slow burn for me um kind of getting to some points of what what i thought about the movie um you know that's the generic plot the general plot for the movie what i just told you there's a lot of other stuff that happens in this movie you got that side story with the journalist uh you got you know all these kids have stuff going on with them the journalist finds out a lot of things there's another side story with the boyfriend when he comes um super slow burner uh i I can't say this is my favorite exploitation movie that I've watched. I'm just not really a huge vampire guy. I, I don't. I, I like to watch the occasional vampire movie, and this is definitely not the worst vampire movie I've ever seen by any means. Uh, I've seen tons of worse ones, but this was just a really, really slow burner. It, it just took forever to get to certain points of the movie. Like there was a certain point where you know you, you there's certain points in this movie where you know things are going to happen, but it just takes a lot of dialogue to get to those points. Um, and this was throughout the whole movie, even toward the end. The ending had a lot of, uh, the last 15, 20 minutes had some really, you know, cool scenes in it with the vampire kids and stuff. Um, but, you know, it, it, I don't know, it didn't really do it for me, I guess. Um, I just wasn't really a huge fan of this movie. I, 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 I see where the director was going for the, you know, with this, the writer and the director. I see, you know, the kind of the, 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 the comedy sense they wanted to make with this movie, you know, with, you know, this being Count Dracula's grandson, and uh, the, there were kids, so there was a lot of comedic things going on with the kids. They, they still did kid things. Um, I don't know. I just, it was one of those movies that, like, you kind of see, you, you know, you watch, uh, you know, you pretty much can pick up everything with this movie without seeing it again, and I just don't see me really revisiting this movie. But on the same, on the same token, um, I do think as a vampire flick, I don't think this was a bad flick. If you're really into, uh, you know, vampire movies, uh, if you really like movies um, that have a lot of dialogue to them, a lot of in-depth dialogue, a lot of things going on, definitely recommend this movie to you. Uh, on a scale from 1 to 10, as far as rating-wise, I would probably give this about, I would say, a 6 out of 10. Um, I, like I said, it wasn't the worst movie, um, the worst vampire movie I've ever seen, but it definitely wasn't the best. Uh, it was no 30 Days a Night. I love 30 Days a Night. Um, but, uh, you know, in the old Dracula movies from, you know, Universal Monsters, love those too. But I thought it was a cool concept. Um, I thought it was, you know, executed as best as it could be. The directing is actually not that bad. It's, you know, kind of a, you know, along the, the B line for directing, but it's still directed very well. Uh, I thought there was some plot holes in it that kind of were... I mean, it took a while to get to them. They got to them, but there were still a couple of little plot holes to the movie that kind of didn't make any a whole lot of sense to me. But overall, you know, like I said, six out of ten. If you like vampire movies, check it out. Artsploitation is a great company. Uh, definitely recommend it if you're into their films. Um, let me know what you guys think if you've seen it. I mean, I'd love to hear anybody else's opinion on this. Like I said, I'm not a huge vampire person, but I still like hearing other people's opinions on these type of movies. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, and until next time, peace out. Deuces.